Scotland has had a 10-year head start with MFL in the primary school. What lessons might they have for colleagues in England? There's been no single how-to that suits every environment. And in this programme, we'll see how context determines management, planning and teaching in a central Edinburgh school and deep in the Aberdeenshire countryside. Easterfield Primary is tiny, but they took on MFL fairly early. We actually started way back in 1997. I wasn't particularly fluent in French either, so it was a learning experience for myself and the children. We didn't have any training at that time, and we muddled along, basically, and a few simple phrases, doing it through games rather than anything else. And then when the Scottish office decided that, uh, yes, we should have it, have modern languages in the primary schools, we stuck with French. Children in Scotland have seven years at primary school, from five to 12. But Easterfield's what's called a composite school. There's just the one classroom and two classes. We have 23 pupils. The majority of them would live in the rural community. One or two still live on working farms. We have two class teachers, um, myself, I have the, the upper stages, and Mrs Borland with the, the lower stages, and we have head teacher relief, Kate Miller. Kate Miller takes the older class, the seven to 12 year olds, for two days a week. When Kate joined us last Easter, I felt that she was a very fluent French speaker and thought as part of her remit, I would give the French over to Kate. Vous allez dessiner un monstre. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Un monstre. Kate is very calm and collected and a very gentle person. She gives them a great variety of activities within the French lessons. They're sometimes playing games, they do listening activities, they do reading activities, and she's just calm and well organised, which you have to be. <laughs> There's not very much space at all, I'm sure you've noticed that. But on the other hand, it is very cosy to be all together. And for the French, I have a very small corner, as you can see. I would like to have more room to put things up, but that's not possible. With the phonics, we started with the, the e, you know, je peux, and uh, they made a little cloud there and every word that we come across that has o, uh, then that child makes a, a little cloud and writes that word and we hang it up and so that's just started so we'll hopefully go on with that. Is Easterfield typical of the county? Anne Moncur oversees a wide range of school environments and teachers. Aberdeenshire is a, a large authority, very well spread out, it's a big area um, and we have everything from two teacher schools to large schools like you would find in a city. So it, in terms of catering for modern languages, you've got a wide variety of situations to deal with. Um, and we worked on the principle, which is, was the recommendation, the national recommendation, that the best scenario is to have the class teacher delivering. Now, we have to be honest and say it's not always possible. You get movement of teachers, you get perhaps you have a teacher trained in a language and they'll move to another school, perhaps get promoted. The teacher who fills in might not necessarily have that qualification. So at times there are practical difficulties to, um, to sort out. Probably the large percentage are delivering to their own class and that's the ideal scenario. But where that's not possible, you've got other teachers in the school coming in and doing a slot with the class while somebody else takes their class. Aberdeenshire will look at each school on its merits and, and, and work out a solution for that. 200 kilometres south in the city of Edinburgh, Beth and Owen also sees advantages in flexibility. There's no one perfect model. Decisions that are made on local basis as to who's going to actually deliver the curriculum. So it'll be the, the head teacher, the management team, along with the, the staff of the school. More and more we're finding a system of internal specialists. Jim Wilson is deputy head at Brunsfield Primary. He's a very experienced linguist. 
he actually goes into classes and teaches uh, French and German. Der Wiefelte ist heute. They've been doing German with me for a year and a half. I teach them 45 minutes every week and occasionally I can leave activities with the class teacher, written activities or listening activities that she can do between my visits. But basically it's the one, one lesson a week that they get. Any words that you remember? Stanley, what do you remember? Buch. 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 It's das Buch. Buch. Or Buch. Buch. We are now moving back, I think, to the model of specialist teachers and it's partly because of our conditions of service. Next year in this school, I will be the only person teaching modern languages and that is so that I can release class teachers for the 45, the 50 minute periods for their non-class contact time that they are, they are entitled to. Uh, so today's learning objective, to learn the names of some of the classroom objects and their gender, okay? It's a word we've used before and we'll just talk about, make sure everybody's clear about what I mean by that. He's pushing them hard in the focused time. But these are all P7 students. In England, they'd be at secondary school. We have learning objectives. Um, that's one of the things that we, that we do in this school, the, the, the formative assessment strategies that we use so that the, the children know at the outset where we're going, why, and how we'll know when we've got there. Foreign language teaching starts in year six at Brunsfield. It's only a requirement for the last two years of primary. But at Easterfield, the upper four years all learn together, so they spend four years in the same class. Lesson planning has to take this into account. Well, these children are going to be having French for four years, and it's a two-year programme in most schools. And so what we're doing is not just going through topics. Um, we're doing colours this month, and we're doing um, parts of the body next month. But when we do it again next year, we'll try and go more into depth so that um, maybe do colours in a different way, with shapes and colours, for example. Kate's on a total immersion French teaching course where she picked up this Snow White game. Now she's using it to revisit colours with the children. The wicked stepmother comes and tries to make her eat a poisoned apple and she has a basket of apples and they're all different colours. Et de quelle couleur est cette pomme, Yves? Tout, tout, c'est violet, très bien. Et de quelle couleur est cette pomme? C'est vert. C'est vert. And so one child has to be Blanche Neige and goes outside and knocks on the door. And when she comes in, she has to choose an apple. And she has to try and say in French, je choisis la pomme rouge. Quelle pomme est empoisonnée? But we've already decided which apple is poisoned before Blanche Neige comes in. Choisis une pomme Blanche Neige. Je choisis la pomme. La la pomme. Pomme. Bleu. Primary fours who haven't been doing it that long, they had to be helped a bit, and I would whisper in their ear. But at least some of them now are at the point where they will try and 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 speak the French or use it. It's a very good exercise to whisper because the children have to watch how I'm forming the words too, so they have to really listen, so that's part of the game. Immersion in the language means they pick up more and more as they move through the years, while the games she's learned keep even the youngest children engaged. It's a song where Jean Petit dances. First he dances with one part of the body and every time another part of the body is added on and the children actually physically dance with that part of the body. And I use the doll, which they enjoy too. Singing is a, a way of getting them to, to talk. They're actually talking in French, but they're singing, so it doesn't seem like they're talking. I try when I prepare a lesson to get quite a lot of that in, because that's the most difficult bit for the children. Listening to me, that comes anyway, because I am talking quite a lot in French. Quel jour est-il aujourd'hui? We do become actually French when we're teaching the French. So it's not really teaching the French, we're just being French and playing games with the children. Given that 
But Jim has shorter bursts of contact with his classes. He's wary of confusing them and uses a lot of English. I've always shied away from the kind of complete immersion thing. I'm a bit wary of them switching off from the word go because it's very difficult to bring them back at that stage. So I like to, my style is to, to do it half and half. Much better to do a little amount properly so that everybody's confident doing it and the children really, really understand what's going on with a few grammatical concepts and a few topic areas which keep the thing interesting because you're learning new words and how to say different things. This Mepchen, Mepchen. The ones who are good will have benefited from hearing me in German first and understanding that and the ones that are coming a wee bit slower behind know what's going on because I've explained it to them in English. And Jim feels this class is ready to take on some knowledge about language too. You sometimes use the word reckon in English as a kind of to work something out, you know? Uh, and it's to do with that reckon. Rechnen is to, to add up or to, to calculate. Der Rechner, der Rechner. I'm very keen to point out the similarities with English and, and the differences. And so wherever we come across a word that has got a connection with an English word, I, I'm, I'm flagging it up to help them remember the, the word and a structure that might be similar or different from English. So that they're seeing how the language builds together as well as just learning a bunch of words. Augen zu. Ich mische die Objekte und dann ich sage Augen auf und ihr ratet, was ist nicht richtig, what's not in the right place. Okay? Augen auf. And remember this time I'm looking for you to give me the der something or other, or the die something or other, or the das something or other. So you're putting the two parts of the word together. I think that knowledge about language is hugely important. Not only because it, it helps children to understand the mechanisms of the language that they are engaged in learning, it can also cross over and have, help them have a greater understanding of their native language. They can start to unpick the fabric of language and start to really understand how it works. About 12% of the school population here have English as a, as a second language. That kind of statistic of the whole school does have quite big implications for attainment in, in English language and reading and writing. But for me as a languages teacher, it actually has quite a lot of positive benefits because a number of these kids, they have a kind of innate sense of what it means to speak different languages and how different languages work. And they come to me with a kind of awareness. Zeit auf den Rechner. Yeah. I'd like to think of it as a puzzle. As it's a fun puzzle. It's not just to be able to speak a modern language or read or write a modern language. It's the thinking skills, it's the, the skills of logic, it's the problem solving that has spin-offs for all sorts of other curricular areas. Who, who reckons that they've done five new nouns? That's a 100% success rate. Wow. Well done. Well done. I think it's very important that we make it very explicit to them that they are not just learning lists of words, you're learning a skill that can help you to communicate, you're actually going to use this to achieve something. Up in this part of the country, not that many people do speak a foreign language and they don't really see the need for it. Well, some of the children don't. They don't come in contact with foreigners very much up here. They're a bit isolated in that respect. So they don't have a need to speak anything but English. And I want to get them to love the language and to want to, to learn more and to be excited about it.